One of the first things that I tackled when I moved into Holly's was her backyard fence because it was completely broken. So after we built that, we tackled the design portion right by the pool and today we're gonna tackle the rest. So today I have partnered up with my friends over at Home Depot to show you how you can really get like the biggest bang for your buck in particular areas when you do want to make over your backyard, but maybe you can't exactly reno or demo or rip up the landscaping and have all that sort of budget. You know the deal by now. It is clean up and clean out time and hands down this is one of my favorite like steps ever is using brute force and my uh, aggression if you will because I love just coming in and ripping something down and creating something completely new and different and we were actually a little bit nervous that there was some termite damage and we did not want that to be leading into the house but thank goodness it was just at the end of one random beam and they like stopped midway and were like no this what is a no bueno so that was really cool and exciting that it didn't come into the house because that is a much larger issue issue. Now a little bit of a note because I know you see all these projects but you don't see all the junk. In Holly's backyard there was a mountain of junk but if you are doing multiple home improvement projects or you're dabbling into different projects you'll start to quickly realize you kind of need a little bit of a team and one guy that is my tried and true is Joe. He is my junk guy so when I get to like the max amount at Holly's house I call him he comes takes it all away and he disposes of it completely properly. Now, if you don't have that available, go ahead and rent a dumpster, go ahead and call a local junk pickup service or go to your local dump, but you do want to dispose of everything that you're getting rid of properly. With a structure like this, you're not going to have like hit it how I did earlier. That was ridiculous. It could always come apart because it got put together, correct? So, when you are demoing something new, take a step back and assess what do you need to take off to make your life easier. Mine were all those screws versus me trying to hammer them all out. Could you imagine? So take a breather. This is where this long piece of wood is gonna pop off. I'm gonna need to detach it from over there. So what I start to do now with my projects is I'll put a one to remind myself this is where I'm gonna start. So I need to start here in order to actually remove the beam because it's completely nailed in. So that will remind me to do them to all of these first. <sighs> and then we can worry about these guys. So phase one complete, backyard projects are crazy. So take them in phases, guys. I totally get that right now. This seems very repetitive. Well, let me tell you, it was repetitive for my arms and my body. And I have never been so sore after a demo because just lifting up the whole time. Anyways, fast forward to first tip for you when making over your backyard. If you can't do the landscaping of your dreams for thousands of dollars or even whatever type of budget it is, if you invest in one big thing that is like your main centerpiece, it will make such a difference in your backyard. And the main centerpiece for Holly's backyard yard is the gazebo so our family over at home depot has a million and one that you can choose from order online and legitimately pick up in the store so i wanted to do that first prior to decorating that way i kind of got an overall vibe of what the gazebo was doing to the backyard since it is a massive piece that we're installing it is currently 11 30 p.m obviously it's nighttime um and i wanted to pop in here because this is crazy for me. I don't ask for help typically. And what brain knew that I had this gazebo sitting here and she took it upon herself to have her husband herself come out and help me. And then Shmood was here and they three told me like, no, you have so many other deadlines. You have so many other things to do. Let us do this. It's adult Legos. Let us have fun. We'll handle this, handle everything else. Um, so that's why you don't see me here too much. And I wanted to say, get you humans like that because that this day i literally at the end of the day like took them to an incredible dinner and i could almost cry because i was like wow that was the most helpful thing ever Callie, you tired yeah you falling asleep with the balloon in your mouth yeah as these busy bees are working behind me as i am talking is uh thank you i am so grateful and Truly, uh, don't know what I would do without you three humans and Callie and Tyson and Vinny who wasn't, you know, he didn't want to come out until the whole thing was built and he showed his big beautiful body. And if you think I'm talking about a human, I'm not. I'm talking about 165 pound grading. <laughs> 
when these incredible humans did finish this up, I, in fact, walked out and said, wow, look at everything I just did. Look at the gazebo I built, just making fun of them. But I am so grateful that they did this because this just saved me so much time to be able to focus on other things for you guys. I moved on with lighting the interior of the gazebo with what I had on hand that I have purchased from Home Depot before. You guys know I'm all about the bulb lighting. If you follow any kind of backyard makeover that I've done for Paul's house, it is always this tried and true Hampton Bay bulb lighting. I will like cafe lighting. I will link it down below for you. Since I had this on hand, I wanted to see what it would look like. And then I wanted that to inspire me for the remainder of the vision for this new gazebo outdoor area. I was feeling a little bit on the uninspired side of things when it came to the decor of this backyard gazebo. So I drove around and thrifted a little bit this morning to see if anything kind of put a flame inside me and it did and I'm very excited about it. So we're going to go to Home Depot because that's always my last stop on a final day for a project and ensure that we are getting all of the things we need. But for me, it's really coming down to lighting and greenery, which Home Depot has a ton of. A little side note, I will go into Home Depot if I have to, but most of the time I will order things online and then pick it up in store to make my life a lot easier. But I just wanted to see what they had available for me to look at lighting wise. I think go-to lighting for anybody for any outdoor space are string lights, but something that I love about the Hampton Bay 12 light indoor outdoor on a 24 foot string light with single filament LED bulbs, number one, are that these bulbs are shatterproof. You heard me correct. Do you know how many times I have hung up string lights and they have like randomly just fallen and dropped and shattered? No, no, that is not the case here, my friends. So not only are they safe around children and pets, but they also have a weatherproof design that's for long lasting use. And there's different flexible mounting options, but the mounting hardware is not included. Just a little side note. And if you do want to know from my little design junkies out there, the bulbs are spaced two feet apart and these are energy efficient, which allows for up to 600 feet of connected lights. I know that some of you like those little tiny tidbits. So there you go, friends. I like mixing these type of bulbs with the Hampton Bay Cafe string lights. I just like the type of texture and depth it provides to a space. But on top of that, I think something else that is very important is not only lighting up the area you'll be entertaining, but the back area or the trees in the little bushes that you find special to your yard that you would like to show off and flicker flirt with. Hampton Bay also has a four pack of these 4.5 watt millennium black adjustable light color outdoor integrated LED landscape floodlights. And yes, that's a mouthful, but what they are is basically like up lighting the trees that you want to just show off. You want to flicker flirt with the people that are sitting there to show the depths of your land or whatever you want to highlight in your backyard or front yard. These can be connected to either a 12 or 15 volt Hampton Bay transformer or a compatible transformer, but that is sold separately. These are not dimmable, but they do have a color changing technology that offers the option of three light colors. The difference in the light colors are a warm white, a soft white, or a daylight. These are durable, weather resistant, cast aluminum construction, so you don't gotta worry about them. And they are also backed by a five year limited warranty. The long lasting LED lights are maintenance free. No bulbs are necessary to change. And like I said, you can easily adjust them up or down, around however you need to, to make sure that you're lighting up exactly what you'd like. Holly loves how those pepper trees are lit up. It's something she talked about doing for a long time. So I'm really stoked on that. But she also said that she likes the sense of security, how bright it is because it was so dark before. Not only are floodlights super awesome for landscaping, but also I love path lights. And Hampton Bay has the solar black LED flicker flame path light that come in a two pack. Now, originally I was going to use these for the backyard, but they are just way too beautiful. I need to showcase them front and center in the front yard. But something that I love about them are they are solar. So they automatically provide dust to dawn lighting. There's no wiring needed. The flicker flame LED creates the appearance of an actual flame inside the lights housing. There's two different light settings. There's flicker flame or steady solid light. So you get to choose. There are no bulbs that you have to replace. And there is up to eight hours of runtime when they are fully charged. I think these are the most chic solar lights that I have come across personally. So I am super excited to implement these also in the backyard, but into our front yard makeover that I will be doing as well. 
I first started by removing the glass shades that can hold the bulbs and you can actually donate those back to Goodwill or Habitat for Humanity. What up? What up? Oh, all the dogs. Who let the dogs out? I did. Hey. The base. So these also come off. Funny fact. I removed the glass shades. Like I said, I just twisted off basically the light socket because we don't need electricity, which means I removed the wiring completely. So we just had the chain and the chandelier fixture. I went ahead and cleaned all the dust and debris after I removed all of the things away from it. And I also shook it upside down and had all those little, not nuts and bolts, but washers fall out because I couldn't grab them with my fingers. They were so sore. I moved on to spray painting this, the Canyon Black by rust that you can pick up at Home Depot as well in a satin finish. So it had a little bit of gloss and wasn't so matte like the gazebo. Since that's going to be inside the gazebo, I wanted it to have a little bit of sheen to play off of it. I moved on to adding exterior construction adhesive, the ultimate strength I could find, and I just dolloped that on there like there was no tomorrow. I went forward with adding the, I almost said water catchers, the base of the planters to the top of that just excess of construction adhesive. Now, yes, there's gonna be overflow on the bottom. You will see that when I hang it up, but we are going to just wipe it away and add a little bit of black paint and make it look completely seamless. I did let this sit overnight hanging for a full two days for it to fully dry until I decided to add the plants when I felt a little bit confident enough that this was actually going to work. This is going to look nuts when I start to put the plants up because they're still in the plastic containers, but we have a lot of mini humans that sometimes hang out directly on this couch, this play area, right in the center of the old gazebo on the floor. And I don't want a terracotta pot coming down and God forbid smacking the floor right next to them. I would much rather a plastic container be falling than a terracotta pot base all the things. It just made me way more nervous. And I also went and secured with just a little bit of construction adhesive just to ensure that those plastic ones weren't going to topple over, even though they wouldn't necessarily quote unquote harm anybody. That's why I chose not to do terracotta though. Just like with my rules, interior, same thing exterior. We painted the house from a pink to black in our front yard makeover and carried that over to the backyard. And then another tip that I have for you besides changing the paint is changing out your light fixtures. That always makes a difference. So again, you don't have to necessarily demo and reno any and everything. You can pick and choose little things here and there that are in your budget that make a really big difference. And the reason I'm taking away the floodlights is because there's already so much light over here and I'm gonna be doing bulb lighting across the back of our house so she'll have plenty. I'm gonna keep the floodlights on the back right and the back left of the house. But I just figured a floodlight right here was way too much if she wanted to turn it on. Even when I did have it as a floodlight and put new bulbs, it was just too aggressive out there. So something more romantic, something more romantic, security ones on the side. There are a couple of things that I am going to be darkening the tone of, making them black to go with the whole theme of the backyard. One of them are the electrical boxes. Now, I did this at Paul's house. Once I got approved, you just have to make sure that the labels can be clearly red and you're allowed to paint the exterior boxes. That is where I am from. I am not quoting that for anywhere else, but that is what we are allowed to do here. So I went ahead and changed these from that just gray to black to blend in with the paint that we did. And then I also decided to pick up some Home Depot macrame hangers that they have available in their plant section, like their indoor plant section. And I decided to dye those guys black to also go with the whole theme of the backyard, which is really fun because this saved me time, even though I would love to macrame these hangers, quite frankly, I rather build. So it was nice to pick these up from Home Depot and then customize them in that way. I left those for like a week. I didn't, I totally forgot about them if I'm being honest. So the beads were completely jet black. It just is black, 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 which I loved. And I think that helped the overall like darkness of it because I don't know with the finish of this macrame at Home Depot, if the dye would typically take after just a couple of hours or so. 
please be sure to grab the appropriate hooks for the weight that you are intending to hang. Just double check the label, ensure you're using anchors if you need to, or you're screwing directly into it. I personally feel like when you add plants above, you're adding height and texture and depth to your space, and it just makes it a little bit more interesting and cozy. Something we will be doing together for the first time is using an angle grinder. And I picked this up at Home Depot and took it nice and easy to remove the old support of the old gazebo. I tripped over this a million and one times and it I just had to get rid of it. And even though I was intimidated at first, this was way easier to use than I anticipated. So I am looking forward to uh, just adding this tool to my tool collection. Now you cannot buy this rug anywhere. This is actually a DIY rug idea I found on Pinterest. I'll link it down below for you, but also my friend Elena, who I love so much, and I've linked her art page down below for you. I just told her, hey, can you paint on a drop cloth? Here's the link to the Pinterest that I found, and I just gave her some colors, and she totally ran with it, and I am falling in love with it. It added so much personality to this space. I added Holly's furniture that she had previously right back where it was. I just centered it a little bit differently and you'll notice in the reveal that the gazebo is a little bit more skewed to the right and that is because we are anticipating the runoff from the gazebo into the roof. We don't want to overwhelm the gutter and now it's just adding these small details here and there like this hose holder that I picked up also from Home Depot. I've linked absolutely everything that I can down below for you. I never want it to seem like I'm saying it's my way or the highway, so that is why I like to show you the other inspiration that Home Depot has so graciously curated on their website for you if you're looking for outdoor inspiration. I did a little spritz to clean everything up and went ahead and started to add some greenery to really pull this space together. I wanted to stack a couple of plants on each side to pull your eye evenly and just have this like almost jungle-esque feel when you're looking from the pool at the house. If you click back to Holly's other backyard makeover that we did, you'll see she pulls in these really beautiful greens, purples, maroonies into the landscaping, but also she does that in her house. So I wanted that to reflect when you're directly transitioning from the interior to the exterior. It just feels very natural and sexy and chic and I am in love. Just because it drives me insane to have dog toys everywhere, I decided to add a a wicker basket to keep them nice and organized when we don't want to see a mess. Something that I think is very special is the transition of spaces. So I wanted to show you what it looked like at dusk when it was just about to get dark and where that key lighting comes in because I think if you have any sort of outdoor space, lighting is where it is at and Home Depot is a one-stop shop for literally everything that you need for your backyard space to make it the perfect moment for you and your family. I am trying my hardest to pull from what we already have and not go to purchase, but I did grab a couple of items and like I said, I linked everything down below for you and I love the fact that when those plants grow out, they can like wrap around the lights and it can become more of a green moment because Holly loves nature, loves her greens and that is something I just wanted to be so lush in this area and really make it cozy. But one thing that truly makes it cozy is the lighting and like I said, not only does Home Depot have a plethora, a huge variety of lighting for you to choose from so there is something for everybody in every space but they have all those fine little details from greenery to even the citronella candles that look like these cute tin lanterns that you can add to that space to make it special. It's truly incredible what lighting can do for an outdoor space. So if anything, just take the time to pay attention to that in your backyard. Also, if you're looking for inspiration outside, not even outside, but not just in your backyard, but literally for anything, Home Depot has a blog. And if you do not know, so many incredible content creators contribute to this blog and partner up with Home Depot from literally gardening to how to restain your deck to building the perfect office nook. It's all there for you. I've linked it down below for you in the description but I don't think a lot of people know about this and um, this is one thing that used to be like my Rolodex when I first started doing home improvement. You guys, thank you so much with your patience from um, things being a little bit more on the project focus side to random makeovers. I have a lot of tidying up to do, if you will, before we close this chapter at Holly's and I'm just so grateful for Home Depot coming in and contributing 
this massive update to her backyard. I That is like one of her most like prized areas. I feel she loves her backyard. And this was just something that took it to another level. So thank you to Home Depot. I have linked all the products that I've used from them down below. The lighting that made this so special is also in the description box for you. I will see you guys very soon for another makeover. And um, just say hi in the comments down below. I'm always commenting back to you guys. I promise, I try my best to come back to everybody. Love you guys. I'll see you soon for another DIY.